Hello and welcome. Today we're going to rebuild slash reseal the injection pump on my M51 powered E34. The process is more or less the same for all Bosch VP37 pumps, both 4 and 6 cylinder versions. But first, we're going to take out all the stuff that's preventing us from accessing the injection pump. Now take out the 18mm fuel pump nut, put the magnet on there so you don't lose it, insert the special tool, now put the bolt from the tool inside, this bolt is going to help you push out the pump to the back. Now you have to make sure that every single connection to the pump is removed. Let's start by the fuel return line. Put this cover on, it comes with the rebuild kit from Bosch. Now the main electric connector to the pump, just turn the plastic ring at the bottom and then it disengages and you can just pull it out. Don't forget the fuel cutoff switch or fuel cutoff solenoid. There's this rubber grommet on there and the thing itself, the nut, it's just the same connection as with the glow plots and it is an 8mm connector. And now just this connector all the way down there, it is the simple BMW clip-on type. Sorry if it is not picking up well on camera. Now I'm going to try to remove the feed line for the pump, size 17. Take off the clips right here, otherwise you can't turn it. Now the pump is fully loosened, all the connections are loose, all bolts are loose. Now you just need to turn the 18mm bolts in the tool and then the pump is getting pushed out to the rear. Make sure to not lose the key from the hub. The pump is now on the workbench and now I'm going to show you how you can disassemble it. You're going to need the special triangular socket for these pumps and just some regular T30 Torx. It appears that this pump was already leaking from this. There is a mechanism inside that governs the advancement. And from here, because here everything is completely wet and soaked, so the main seal went. The main rear seal is mostly the reason why these pumps fail due to age. Before you're taking everything apart, make sure that you're marking the positioning of the top half. This one already has one with a dot, but make sure to do another one with a cutter or so, because otherwise you won't know where to put it back, and since this is a really, really sensible part, it really needs to be spot on, so mark the top part of the pump before you remove it. On this side you can really see that it was leaky because it is really disgusting all over and there is lots of old diesel and varnish that is just there. So this one is also leaking right there, I can see it, and there as well, and around the advanced solenoid. After doing the marks, you remove this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. This is the triangular bolt, by the way. And now you can perfectly see the sliding adjustment. Via the front of the engine means leaner, via the back of the engine means richer. Because the top part of the pump is adjustable, this is what's electronically controlling the internals of the pump. This pin needs to recede into a special slot I'm going to show you right now and it is absolutely crucial that this pin is sitting correctly once you reinstall the top part. The little tiny hole on the plunger inside of the pump, that's where this pin from the electronic top part needs to sit. This can happen because of old bad fuel or long sitting times because then the diesel goes bad and it becomes kind of sticky. Now I'm going to take off the pump hat. There's 40, 30 Torx all around. Now I have to weld this nut on top of there and then just loosen it. Before that I'm going to take the electrical components off because I don't want to damage them. So I've just taken out a complete bolt and found out that the normal bolts are just regular M6 thread. So I'm just going to destroy this bolt that's stripped and then buy new hardware at the local hardware store because this is fucked. I welded on like 10 nuts and they all just snapped off. Right now I'm really annoyed and this is something that if I knew it would have happened I would 
just have not touched the pump. So I took a drill to it. Now this is what's left of it and this. The height difference you can see there, all the other bolts are still fully torqued down and literally I think the bolts stretch a quarter of a millimeter or so. These bolts were way too tight, like way 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 too tight. That was just not acceptable. And I think that was a professional shop that did this because there were some markings on them with like black paint or yellow paint on top. And I literally think somebody took this to a Bosch service or a regular mechanic and they performed some work on it and they just talked it down so hard that they would never have been come undone and that's just ridiculous. I just came back from the hardware store and I've bought some new bowls. Unfortunately they're no longer Torx but a standard 10 mil but they are stainless steel fasteners so of supposedly good quality. This was absolutely a horrible experience because of this one magnet boat because some retard decided to over torque it and uh, yeah I've just spent around five hours trying to weld nuts on. I've welded on seven nuts, seven, and they all came off, all. Uh, then I just had to drill it out and uh, horrible day, really. But let's power on. Unfortunately, the new bolts are a bit longer than the original ones, so I have to trim them down. Now that I have gotten our bolt dilemma under control, we can continue with the disassembly. There's a lot of pressure on there, so be careful. In case you're wondering, yes, you can do this inside of the car, but I would highly suggest doing it outside of the car because there's a lot of pieces that can drop into the pump and if you don't notice it, then you're gonna destroy the pump because the internals of the pump are actually just jumping around. The way you can check this after reassembly is taking the whole unit and shaking it and listening if there's a audible clonking noise because if there is like a rattling noise or clonking noise, then that means that the shim inside probably sprung off, so then you need to redo the whole procedure. And this part is actually what governs the whole thing, and on my engine, if I go slow, it works flawlessly, but sometimes when I go fast, I can feel high resistance, so this probably needs a good bit of cleaning. And this is the cam plate that I showed you guys in the latest video. You can see the six lobes, and on the other side, there is this dot that indicates to the key on the shaft from the pump. This is also why I recommend doing it outside of the car because as you could just see everything fell apart and there is rollers and a spring that dropped. So we have to reposition that later on. While we're going to take the disassembly even further I'm going to clean these parts in the ultrasonic cleaner. And this right here is the shim that often falls in. Just like the key you have to take some silicon grease while reinstallation and just put a dab under it and then you can securely reinstall it without dropping it in. We're gonna take out the cylinder that governs the advance. As far as I know there are three levels of advancement. I think it was anything under 7 degrees is the lowest level, then the intermediate level is 7 degrees to 21 degrees C and then anything over 21 degrees is the third level. I'm not sure, I've read that on a forum, don't quote me on that, I just wanted to throw that out there. Start by removing the cover that is sitting away from the engine. There's a big spring inside, so there will be pressure. Be prepared. This is actually a different seal than in my kit, which is stupid to say the least. And this is the advanced mechanism. The solenoid right at the top controls how much the cylinder at the bottom can move and this causes the whole assembly to rotate in the interior and thereby it retards or advances the injection timing. To take out the cylinder there is a clips right there at the bottom of the wheel. Just take needle nose pliers and pull on top of it or pry it off with a thin screwdriver. That works as well. Just make sure to not damage these surfaces. Be really careful, I just got it off and it flew right in the middle of my two eyes, so uh, yeah, that's kind of dangerous. Now you have to remove a second pin inside of the pin. The clip we just removed is to retain the pin inside of the pin. It sounds weird, but it makes sense once you're in there. Take needle nose pliers, just pull it out. It is really tiny and don't lose it. Now you have to turn the shaft to be able to take out the second pin. As you can see, the big cylinder already fell out. 
And now the whole shaft can come out basically. Pretty much everything. This is one of the main rotating assembly. And inside of the advanced cylinder, there is another shim, don't lose that. This is the shim. And this is a weird contraption because there is a pin that holds down a pin that holds down a pin for the main pin. I hope it makes sense. I'm gonna put everything back really cleaned and all the internals look pretty much new on this pump. This has probably been changed and is in amazing condition. The only thing that wasn't good is the main actuator on the pump hat wasn't able to function because the car sat for three months plus and I think the diesel just gunked up the main shaft and therefore it couldn't regulate correctly. This is now getting cleaned, dipped in oil and reassembly time with new seals. I just had to take off the main shaft because the smaller key for the pump internals actually fell out inside of the pump so I had to retrieve that. The big key is for the hub that is inside the timing case and the small key is for the internals of the pump itself. The pump internals and the shaft are actually in really good condition. There are visible signs of utilization but nothing that I can feel with my finger. Really nothing. It is in really great condition. Even the casing. I can go down all the way and I feel absolutely nothing. Perfect. There's actually a big shim that connects to the shaft. And then you have to put in the small key right there. And now you can align it with the internals by putting it in. Before we reinstall the pump hat, it is now really important to change the seal right here that failed. And we really need to pay attention because of this shim. We're gonna glue it in place with some grease so that it doesn't fall into the actual pump while reinstallation. Clean the surface where the little thing mounts. And now a tiny dab of silicon grease. Now that the pump hat is ready to go back in, we just have to make sure that the slot right here aligns perfectly with the actual notch on the cam plate. Now that everything is back together and you can visibly see that everything is seated correctly, you can perform a shake test. If you hear anything else other than complete silence, you need to redo the whole procedure because something fell off inside. The only thing that can wobble around is the actual actuator, so if you can hear that, just hold it down and make sure that it's not this as the cause. Right near the microphone, nothing is rattling around, so we are fine to proceed. Oh, and another thing I forgot to say is, you really need to make sure that the dot on the cam plate is aligned with the key right at the front. Otherwise, your pump is mounted 180 degrees reverse and your engine has no chance of actually starting. Now that the main part of the pump is back together and well, we can reinstall the other parts, like the advanced solenoid. I've already cleaned this mesh filter. Now I'm gonna replace this seal and the other seal inside, you can take that out with a pick and then you just put it on here. And then you, when you reinstall it, it seats into position. Now we can put back the actual electrical top part. Make sure the actuator hole is sitting right at the top. We're also going to change the seal right here from the electrical top part. Then, when we're reinstalling the whole thing, we really, really need to make sure that the actuator and this part are sitting together. So it's better to do it a few times than to have a not working pump. Ideally, you would want to pre-fill the whole pump. I have no diesel lying around, so I'll just cycle the key a few times and let the in-tank pump do its work. Remember the marks we've made before? 
Now we need to line up approximately the top part with the marks that we've made. The markings are now spot on, but we have to do the final setting of the minimum adjustment quantity because this is what this adjustment is with the pump installed in the engine. And this is actually the electrical top part of the pump itself, which is governed by the DDE. Actually, when it comes to electrical components, that is not really my strength, so I don't really know how this works. I just know that this whole contraption up top regulates and measures something at the bottom, and thereby it governs the whole mechanical bottom part of the pump. But this electrical top part, just we need to reseal it because this seal is completely flat, and uh, when it comes to the function of this, I am not too savvy. There's people that like to clean this whole contraption with electrical cleaner. I don't have any of that, so I'm not going to touch it with brake clean because that can possibly damage the plastic from the board. Now I'm going to put back the feed line with a new washer. I'm going to clean this once more and then it's ready to go back in the car. I still wanted to say that this cannot be considered a full rebuild because we didn't measure the internals of the pump. We just went off, okay, there's no visible or feelable signs of scarring and then they're good to reutilize. And we only changed the seals that mostly go bad, like this one, the two top ones. Uh, there's also seals in each one of these six individual departures and we didn't change those. We didn't change the seals from the pressure control. It is just a reseal and not a rebuild, but most of the time that does the job because the internals are often still fine and the pump are just leaky and they lose pressure and the advanced solenoid is no longer working correctly because of debris in the mesh filter, etc, etc. There's just, it doesn't hurt to clean everything well and then reseal it because oftentimes that does a noticeable improvement on these cars. So if you want to do this as well, I hope this helped. Sorry if I didn't go into all the detail, but this is gonna be mostly what you're gonna need. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.